The V&A has about 550 works in wax in our collection. Um, of these, a large proportion of them are 18th century portraits, and of those, there are about 20 works by Samuel Percy. We don't know a huge amount about our Samuel Percy works. Um, sometimes we know who the sitter is, but no one's really delved into Percy's kind of business and, and how many portraits he was making and, and who he was making them for. So I decided to apply for a bursary from the Understanding British Portraits Network so that I could visit other collections to gain a kind of a deeper insight into his practice. Uh, so Samuel Percy was born in Dublin in about 1753 and um, we don't know very much about his, his early life but we do know that he entered the Dublin Society Art School um, in about 1772. It's particularly interesting that Percy wanted his works to be shown to their best advantage and in order for this to happen he pasted a, a handwritten instructions on the reverse of the, of the frame. You can see here a typical set of instructions Percy writes, to see these portraits to advantage, hold the top of the frame parallel to the window that all the features may catch equal light and shadow. By his own account, Percy claimed that he was thoroughly bred in every branch of the statuary business, but primarily he was working in wax and it's likely that in the early years he was working in a, in a monochrome wax. And then later on, he developed his skill in what he termed stained waxes, which were multicoloured wax portraits. Percy's techniques would have been typical of most wax modellers, in that he would have often carved into a soft wax to produce a likeness. And then he possibly cast the soft wax to create a mould, which he could then fill with a harder wax and then add the final detail afterwards. And this gave him the ability to be able to cast multiple versions of the same portrait. He also produced thin sheets of wax for the clothing, and then while the wax was still soft, he would then drape it to create a jacket or a gentleman's lace cravat. So it was extremely delicate, exquisite work. As an itinerant artist, Percy travelled around the country um, to smaller towns and cities to try and promote his art form and gain new permissions. He would put adverts in the local newspapers wherever he went, and these would take the form of uh, kind of puffing advertisements about his skill. When Percy travelled to Bath, he placed one of his adverts in the Bath Chronicle, um, which in part says, Connoisseurs have declared this art to be the most pleasing and difficult study of genius. The stains and imitation of dress are brilliant and permanent. The features breathe the glow of nature, unknown to mediocrity. Percy was also very fortunate to have royal patronage, in particular from Princess Charlotte, the daughter of George IV. And Percy produced a number of portraits of Princess Charlotte over the years. I was really keen to find a wax portrait by Percy that had stayed um, within the same setting, the same house or the same family um, since its creation. I came across a portrait wax at a house called the Argery in Northern Ireland and on seeing a photograph of it, it immediately struck me that this was likely to be by Samuel Percy. After contacting the collections manager at the Argery, they confirmed that actually on the reverse of the frame, it was signed Samuel Percy. So thanks to the bursary, I was able to spend some of the grant money to visit the Argery and have a look at the wax itself, but also go to the public record office in Belfast and see if I could try and track down how long this wax had been at the Argery, who it had been commissioned by, and indeed who the portrait was of. I did find an inventory um, of the house collections in which it was listed that there was a, a wax portrait of Joshua McGough in a gilt frame. So the portrait was of Joshua McGough, who was the father of the person who built the Argery. And that was a really exciting find. And we were able to compare the wax portrait of Joshua against a painted portrait of him. And you could see striking similarities. I think that's what's so interesting about a wax portrait because it's three dimensional. You really get a sense of the features. And it was really exciting to be able to do that in a kind of early 19th century house in the kind of setting that these waxes were intended to be displayed in. 
I'm currently writing up my research on Samuel Percy for an article which I hope to publish in the next year. And this will take into account the new discovery that I made at the Argery, but it will also focus on the uh, documentations that I've found about his advertisements um, where he was travelling and his business practice. Um, I hope to situate Percy's work in the art of portrait wax modelling in the wider landscape of British portrait practice because it's been largely ignored in kind of previous scholarship on 18th century portraiture.